Hey everyone and welcome to the channel, my name is Ash and today I'm doing a quick review for Iris and the Giant on Xbox. Now this was released on the 2nd of March 2023, developed by Louise Rigard, apologies I've pronounced that wrong, and published by Clabateur who were kind enough to send us a copy for this video review. Now this game is a very interesting game because it mixes a roguelike style game with RPG elements and a fusion of collectible card game mechanics. And I'm not the biggest roguelike fan, but I really enjoyed this game because of how it takes that card game spin and makes that the focus of the game. Now, in this game, you basically play as a young girl named Iris and basically she gets dropped off at swimming lessons and she's scared to sort of jump into the pool and she's sort of getting laughed at by all the other kids and the game kind of explores her sort of struggles with sort of anxiety and depression it's a sort of like not the real world it's like an alternate world sort of way it presents itself it's very interesting and it's done very minimalistically which is nice as well now, anyway, one thing leads to another and she ends up on this sort of river of sticks and basically she's got to work her way through like this underworld dungeon and to do this she has to fight her way through multiple levels, defeating all these demons and making her way onwards. Now, the game features a very sort of basic art style, but I actually think it works really well. It looks nice. It's it's simplistic to the art, but it's got like bright colours. So it's like whites and beiges, and then you've got like bright yellows and bright reds and stuff like that on the screen, and they really sort of pop. And they've got nice variations to like all of the demons and stuff like that. It does look absolutely fantastic. Now... The game features a sort of card-based system where you have to build your deck. Now, this is a roguelike game. You will die, and you'll have to restart over and over again. Now, there's two ways you can die. You can run out of um, health, or you can run out of cards. Now, you take damage from enemies attacking you, and you use cards or lose cards, basically. So you can... You draw a handful of cards, you get four at a time. You can increase that later on, I'll talk about that soon. And you basically play these cards on like a grid-based system, working your way through all the enemies on screen, and eventually there'll be a set of stairs that you can then interact with to move on to the next area. Now, the game features a variety of different cards. I think there's over 50 different cards you can use to sort of customise your deck. You only start with so many. And as you progress through each of the levels and the, the sort of stages, you'll find these golden chests which you can open and you can get more cards for your deck. There's other ways to get them as well, but that's the sort of main ways to get them from the chests. Now, if you do die, you do get bonuses for your next sort of run, new cards, etc. And you eventually will build up a pretty hefty deck. Now, the good thing is about this deck, you can basically customise it to how you want to play. There's so many different options in how you can um, sort of go about clearing out the enemies. You can go more defensively to protect your health, or you can get like cards that do sort of damage to multiple enemies at once. Now, as you're progressing through the game, you will also sort of like level up your character by basically killing a certain amount of enemies and getting so, so many sort of like shard points which you can get from these sort of like crystals you can pick up. Now when you get them you get sort of like skill points to spend and there's like a whole tree's worth of them to, to unlock. You normally get given like a small choice to pick from and they sort of could be like open a chest right now, get, get given a chest or... Um, you can now have five cards in your hand instead of four or you do one extra damage or you take one less damage and you play your cards as you keep going 
and you kill the enemies and as you kill them on the grid they sort of move forward so it's a very sort of tactical driven sort of working out in which order to kill them without taking as much damage as possible the game also features a progressive difficulty curve as well so um, it starts off easier and it's still tricky to begin with with getting used to like the card system and the, the grid system but it does get progressively more difficult as you play now I really like this game you can also find like as you're playing through the game you can find these like memory orbs which expand on more of the story they unlock little cutscenes and stuff like that and you can also find like warp doors to like special levels which take more skill but if you do complete them they give you greater re rewards now this game is really really interesting like i say it's is it perfect no it's still got the sort of roguelike jank i'm not the biggest fond of sort of i do like this style of game we have to build yourself up and go back but to me roguelike games they only have a certain amount of appeal to me and after a while i just sort of get bored and give up but i love the card based system in this one i love the amount of enemy types in the game there's over for like 40 different enemy types to to come across and also once you get through the first sort of campaign like the first story it then unlocks two extra campaigns one of them is quite interesting i quite like that one but the second one wasn't as good as the the first two it was more of like a challenge mode with like like a time based sort of thing so all in all though really interesting like narrative mixed with the cool card play and having to build up your decks and stuff like that with a nice sort of crisp fresh art style so overall really awesome game now it's playable on xbox one and xbox series x and s it's also available on pc and other consoles and it's priced at £12.49 and pence. so for that you can't really do wrong now you can also pick up the deluxe soundtrack edition for £14.24 and, and that includes the soundtrack of the game as well so if you do like the music which is pretty decent I must admit you can pick that up at a discounted rate or you can buy it separately at £3.29 and pence as well in the Xbox store well that's that for this video guys, hope you've enjoyed it, if you have hit that like button, hit subscribe and we'll see you very soon for more gaming content. Bye for now.